Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and I'd like to do a complete beginner's guide to 7 Days to Die here in 2023, now that Alpha 21 Stable Build is out on the game. What we're going to do in this guide is I'm going to start up a brand new game, generate a whole new world, and I'm going to walk you through the very basics of the beginning part of the game. You know, your first couple of days trying to acclimate to this incredibly fun uh, but deep and difficult zombie apocalypse crafting survival game. So I'm not going to, in this guide, tell you the absolute best thing to do, the quickest build order, uh, or anything in that fashion. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the controls, the UI, some tips and tricks, and basic strategies so that you can enjoy Seven Days to Die however you want. Because honestly, it's like a sandbox, and you can play the game in a way that fits your style. You can use the type of weapon that you prefer. You can, you know, build your own base, or you can retrofit uh, existing bases. You can quest, or you can just go off and do your own thing. There's lots to do here in the game, and I'm just going to kind of give you the groundwork so that the initial difficulty spike and enough of the game can be understood by you so that you can explore it and have it fun with it on your own terms because it really is uh, a great game so what we're going to do is start a new one right here and i'm actually going to create this world called Incomp tutorial and i'm going to make the world generation seed Incomp tutorial and it will be on the generated world name of Hama Territory. So if you enter these like mine, uh, there is the possibility if you use my seed and everything like that, that you might have a similar uh, area that I'm playing, but you can name yours whatever you want. Now I am going to um, alter this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is make some changes here to some of the basic settings so that uh, you can have fun with this game but it's not too difficult okay so i'm going to um you know just say that i'm going to not list my server because i don't want people popping into the game uh but you could go public or if you're playing with your friends you know you could set this for multiplayer i'm going to be doing this guide just single player and explaining it like that because that's how i've mostly played it but this game can also be co-op if you uh, are interested in doing that now let's see here this is all good so we're going to go to this is the general tab we're going to click on the basic tab right here and um, blood moon frequency uh, every seven days is fine for this and blood moon count you can adjust this do, how many enemies do you want coming on the blood moon i'm not going to spoil things in this game but um, like in Zelda, there's a blood moon and it has a different effect here, which is like basically every seven days or whatever you set the blood moon frequency to, a special horde of zombies is going to come through and pursue you and you need to like prepare to defend yourself against it. And you can choose how many zombies you want. By default, there's eight. And I think for a beginner, that's totally fine. And let's see here. Um, I'm going to set zombie night speed um, to run from sprint. This will make the zombies slightly slower in nighttime. Uh, because if they're sprinting after you, it's a little bit too fast uh, when you're first starting out. You don't have to make any of these changes. You could just leave everything default if you like. But I like this uh, change here. And then we're going to go to advanced and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to boost up um, the player block damage to give us a real benefit when we're blocking. And I'm going to reduce the enemy's blocking damage to make them not be able to block quite as much. I'm going to crank up the loot abundance by just one pip from 100 to 150. Just make more loot in the game. And this is up to you, of course, as all of these choices are, but I'm going to click drop on death, nothing. So what this means is if I die in the game, when I respawn, I won't lose anything that was in my backpack. Because 
it can be really frustrating to lose all of your progress and your body isn't like far away and it's hard to get and all your stuff is gone. Of course, go ahead and do drop everything on death if you want more of a challenge or that's the way you like to play. But honestly, for me, um, I don't want to drop all my stuff on death. It just takes a lot of time and can be uh, just soul crushing. So I click it here. Um, I'm going to say mark airdrops on. Yes, that's correct. And then um, for multiplayer, um, I'm going to click on, let's see here. No killing for player killing. This is just what I want. If you want to have player versus player combat, then go ahead. Claim size, I'm going to bump up to 71. Um, and we'll explain that later. And then party shared kill range. I'm just going to bump this up to 1,000. And then I think this is pretty good. These are the settings that were given to me by my uh, good friend of the channel, Alex, who also gifted this game to the channel. So, Alex, thank you so much. And now I think we're ready to start generating our world. I'm going to click start. I'm not going to do anything in advanced generation. I'm going to keep the world size at 8192. And I'm going to say go ahead. Now, once you click start, it is going to take a long time to generate your world. Do not be alarmed by this. It will take several minutes to build your world, even if you have a, a, a decent computer. So just expect that. And I'm going to just kind of fast forward the video until the world is generated because it does take quite a while. Okay, so our world has generated and it is day one, it's 7 a.m., and we get this note when you first boot up the game that says, Dear friend, the wasteland can be an unforgiving place. I found you naked and left for dead with no supplies. It looks like you crossed the duke in a bad way and you could use some help. Enclosed is a short guide to help you survive. If you complete it, we might just take in a new citizen, the White River Settlement. It's real and it's safe. Peace be with you, friend, Noah. Okay, so... That's where you start, and now they're going to give us this kind of like tutorial quest when we boot it up. Basic survival is your active quest. The quest status is displayed on the objective tracker in the top right of the screen. For more information on quests, access your inventory and navigate to the quests menu. Okay, so here we are. And we have started in the woods. I'm just looking around. This is a game where you use WASD to move and you use the mouse to adjust your aim like a first-person shooter. I am playing on the PC, so uh, if you're playing on you know, Xbox or whatever, obviously, your controls will be different. So I'm going to be explaining everything in terms of mouse and keyboard as I'm on PC. Now you can see, yep, they want us to craft a bedroll, and we need to gather plant fibers to do that. We need to push left click to punch, as you can see my character punching here. Uh, we need to punch the grass to harvest plant fibers. Now, when they say punch the grass, they mean these, like, active tufts of grass that are sticking up. And, boom, in the lower left, you'll see that we're gaining experience points and how many of the item that we're getting as we gather. In the bottom left of the screen, you're going to see uh, a coat icon, which is kind of like my status effects. Uh, the blue bar is, like, my stamina or energy. And the red bar is my health. In the top center of the heads-up display or HUD, you're going to see a compass. It shows you what day it is, which is important for the blood moon, of course, what time it is, and any markings on that compass will show up once we place waypoints or have quest tracking. And in the bottom of the heads-up display, you're going to see an action bar that you're very familiar with that has... Uh, action slots that you can push w the number keys 1 through 10 on your keyboard to access, or you could scroll the mouse wheel to select these different things. I've got some water to drink. i got a little food to eat. I have a bandage. I have a torch. I have a claim block, and I have a note with some information. I'm just going to go push 1 again uh, to get my hands empty, so I'm punching. Now below that, on my heads-up display in the center, you'll see a green bar and a blue bar. This is my hunger and my hydration. And then above that, there's a big empty bar that's like my experience bar that's showing how much experience I'm gaining to get to the next level. 
And now that I have enough grass fiber by plant just punching all of these plants here, I can push tab on the keyboard to open up the crafting menu. And then from this crafting menu, you'll see that on the top of the HUD, we've gone to the crafting tab, and there are other tabs that we can select by pushing tab and just clicking on these up here uh, as one means of accessing them. And whatever we can build is going to be displayed here on a list. And if we have the ingredients, then it will be in bolded in white. And if it's we don't have the ingredients yet, like for this bandage, it's grayed out. If we select a bandage, for example, you could see it takes two cloth fragments. We have zero of two. Now the bedroll, it takes... 10 plant fibers we have 24 so we have way more than we need and all you need to do is click craft right here or push w to make this so we just push w and you can see it fills up here a little queue of the things we're crafting because it takes time in the game to actually craft the bedroll and then they want us to push tab to close the crafting menu and place this but first we need to put it on a tool bell slot which are the hot bar slots i was just talking about so i'll put it right here by the way on this screen when you push tab you'll see the crafting menu you can cycle through this using different um like these are the things i can build these are tools these are ammo these icons just represent different categories of things that we can craft and we'll learn more recipes as we go and we, we actually start knowing how to make a lot of things, uh, but we need more ingredients. Now we've put this on the toolbar. Here is our inventory. It is important to note that in this game, your inventory operates in this way. Stacks. How heavy things are does not matter. It just matters how many stacks of items you have. And you can see right now that just starting out, I have three rows of nine. Um, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, so I have 27 I can carry without being encumbered. If I carry some more items in these kind of uh, slots here that are more transparent, these will start to encumber me, which is bad. It slows me down. And in a game where you're surrounded by mean zombies and other en entities, you don't want to be slow. So it's up to you how much encumbrance you're comfortable with, but as if you go over these 27 that you start with, you will be encumbered. Now, of course, if you get certain skills, you can carry more things, but that's for later. So I'm going to push tab to close this up, and we'll look at that menu more, but let's just put down the bedroll. So if I select the bedroll um, by pushing 8, because I put it on slot 8 of my tool belt, or by using the mouse wheel, um, I can put this down wherever I want. Now, I can push left click to kind of like rotate this thing 90 degrees. And let's just say I want to put this bedroll right here. I'm going to right click and I've put a bedroll right there. Now, why this is important is you'll see there's like a bed icon on this. This is basically our spawn point. So if we die, we start at this sleeping bag. There is no sleeping in Seven Days to Die. You never need to rest like in Project Zomboid or other games. You stay up all the time uh, and you don't have sleep as a thing that you need to worry about. Okay, so now they want us to craft a stone axe. So we need to punch grass stones and bushes it's like arc survival evolved you know you're just punching everything minecraft whatever to get these things so we need stones so i'm going to look around for stones and luckily the game tracks this for you so you see where these these yellow hammers with these yellow bricks in my field of view this is highlighting the quest items that we need and these are the stones so i just go over here and i can push e to just pick these up you actually don't need to punch the stone um that's not doing anything. Um, or is it? It is. So you can punch the stone instead of picking it up if you want uh, to gather them. But you have to like... It, sometimes it's less convenient because you have to punch the grass and stuff that's in the way. You can just push E to pick them up instead. It's up to you either way. Now, once you push tab, we can go and they want us to craft a stone 
axe. Now, the stone axe is in this basics tab. It has this yellow exclamation point next to it because it's a quest thing. So we click on this. It says it takes two small stones. It takes two plant fibers and two wood. And here's how much we actually have of all that stuff. So we have enough. So we just push W to craft it. It goes into our queue, and we've got it. So now we have a stone axe. How about that? And I'm going to put this on the first slot because I always like to have tools that I'm going to use way over on the right or the left, I'm sorry, of my tool belt. So I can push like one, two, three, and four just to get to these things easily. And now they want us to craft some pants. Yes, indeed, we are nude. This is probably important. If I click on my character, this panel icon right here, this is crafting, by the way. It says crafting in the middle, but you don't click on this. You click on the hammer for crafting. This uh, person with a hat and beard is you. Now, you will look different. I have customized my character to look like the channel I avatar, which is like blue with the yellow hair and beard. That's just my thing. So I look like a Smurf that's having a bad day. Um, and that's my thing. But you'll notice I'm nude. I have some boxer briefs on. That's all I've got. So if I go here and I click plant fiber plants and I just push W to craft these babies, they go into my inventory. Now you can either push B or click on the character panel here to open your character menu. And here's your uh, plants. And if you select them, you push W to wear them or just click this. And now I've got on pants and you can see I have on some amazing looking pants. I'm ripped and stylish. Welcome to Seven Days to Die. Now they want us to make a wooden club. So I'm going to push tab to close the crafting menu. Um, or, you know, any panel that you have open, whether it's the character panel um, or the map panel or your skills. Whatever you've got open, you can just push tab to close that. Or um, you can push B. Escape does the same thing. All right, so they want us to make um, a stone axe, so let's go over to crafting. We did that, and now they want us to equip it. So I'm going to push one, and they want us to get some wood from trees. So once I push one, um, I have the axe out. But if I were to push nine, for example, I'd put the axe away. But let's just roll with the axe. Again, the trees are highlighted with this yellow because it's a quest item, so I'm just going to bat this. Now, when I start hitting this tree with the axe that I've made with left click, you'll see that there is a health bar for the tree, and I have to take this down to zero to chop it down. So this is not easy, but here's the deal. Let's look at what's going on. The axe in my tool belt on the first slot, it has a one on it, which means it's level one, and then it has a brown bar beneath it, which is the durability of the item. You can see my energy going down the blue bar or my stamina that has the little sneaker on it because this is an activity that takes a lot of energy to do. Chopping down a giant tree. All right, and we bust it up. And as we bust it up, I'm going to push tab to open my inventory. We just automatically get all of that wood. It just goes right into our inventory. It's very convenient. We also got some pine seeds uh, or pine cones, I suppose. And now they want us to craft that club. So I'm going to push tab. I'm going to go to the club. And we can craft this baby. I'm just going to push uh, W to do it. And I'm going to put this club over here. I'm going to left click. And now the water is selected. I'm going to put the water over here. I like to have food um, and on the right side of my toolbar. And my first aid over here as well. Okay. And... Uh, we can right-click on uh, this note right here. It says this is from the Duke of uh, Nabizgane. Just a friendly reminder that you pay on time every time or there'll be consequences. Next time, we won't be so nice. Thanks for the gear, but you still owe, owe us. See us soon, the Duke. So the Duke's the one that left us naked. You can keep this note um, or you can drop it on the ground. Or what you can do with this note is you notice how it says scrap. If I click scrap, I just turn it into a piece of paper. And a piece of paper is an ingredient we can use for other things. So you don't have to do that. But if you have stuff that you don't need, you can scrap it. 
and turn it into something that you can repurpose. Now they want us to craft a bow and arrow, so we need feathers. Feathers are the most easily found in these bird nests, and here's one. Now you push E to search the bird nest, and there's two eggs, and there's a feather in this bird nest. Now you could just double click this or drag these over, or you can simply um, push R to take everything or click this box with three up arrows. And boom, I take it. Whenever you take stuff from a container in this game, I don't care what it is, a backpack, whatever it is, hilariously, it just explodes. That's not bad. That's just what happened. Now, there's a cabin in front of us, okay? And we'll maybe look at that later, but I'm not going to head up there for the time being. Oh, there's some junk over here. So there's a garbage pile. So I'm just going to push E to search through it, and we find a bunch of sand and clay. We don't really need any of that, but I'll just push R and take it. I'm going to push tab, and we're going to go ahead and make a primitive bow, push W to craft that, and push W to make the arrow. I just queued them up to show you the queuing, because basically I was still making the bow, but while you're making a bow, you can select something else, and I made the arrow right after I made the bow. I can put the bow on my hotbar here. The arrow can stay in my inventory. They also want us to craft a building block, so I will select this and push W to make it. A building block, um, they want us to place it, so I'll put it on my tool belt, and I'm going to push tab, and I'm going to push 4 to select this building block. This is like if you want to make a base, or you want to make a wall, or you want to patch a hole in a building or something. You can do this, and you just right-click it, and then you have this like really bad block and if we select the axe, they're telling us how we can upgrade this. I can push E to pick this back up, or I can hold right-click with the axe, and you notice how instead of the down arrow, like when you're chopping something down or destroying it, if you're holding right-click, there's an up arrow, and you actually upgrade this into a stronger uh, box. So... Now we've got this better. I don't have the technology or the ingredients to upgrade this further, but this is much better than the basic block that we built. Now they want us to build a campfire, so we need stones. So uh, we can get some. Now you can hold shift to run. Sh uh, running, of course, takes up more energy, but, you know, who doesn't like running to get around faster? Uh, I need some more stones, but they're not highlighting because there's not that many stones. So let's go look for some more. So I'm just going to run over this ridge. And here's some. Uh, this is a resource node. We can't get this without a pickaxe. I picked that up, and now we have enough to make ourselves a campfire. So I'm going to select a campfire. It takes five small stones. We have five. I'm going to craft it with the W just like that. And then I'm going to put this on my hotbar, and I'm going to push 4. And I'm just going to kind of right-click and put it down right there. And you can use this, uh, but right now there's a little note. Good job, Survivor. You've proved to be capable with much potential. We've marked your map with the nearest White River Outpost location. There you will find a trader where you can buy and sell goods and trade stories with one of our friendly citizens. Welcome aboard, Noah. All right, so we got some stuff for completing that little tutorial, and I'm going to push tab to show you. Um, you start with some, and I believe we got some for the tutorial. My memory is foggy on this. You might not have to complete the tutorial but uh, to get all these skill points. Now that we've done it, I, I wasn't going to spend them until we were finished. Right here, there's a character's head with a mortarboard on it, which is where your skill points go. And your skills are governed by different stats. So you have perception. These are your attributes. Strength, fortitude, agility, intellect. Um, and these are the kind of main attributes that you have. And you raise up your attribute to raise up the spears with uh, the skills within it. And you can choose what you want. So, for example, perception, you're good uh, with spears, with shooting guns, with finding and noticing loot. Strength is good with shotguns and clubs. You can wear heavy armor. You can carry more stuff. 
fortitude is good with you know machine guns you have more hit points you can do barehanding um you have recovery agility is all about gunslinging archery moving quickly light armor acrobatics parkour uh, and intellect is like you are good with crafting stuff and you can barter better and you can make cooler things robots electrocution stuff um all of these things now for this build do whatever you want but for our guide i'm going to go with perception because i love spears i just think a spear is a great weapon especially for a beginner you can keep the enemies at range with a spear and it also allows us to get more loot and you can um do more damage with rifles once we get rifles so you kind of get to start with spears and then maybe graduate up to rifles but spears are just good in general for melee so if i want to raise some skills all you need to do is click on the skill you want and click on the shopping cart icon to buy it but i'm going to tell you straight up you want to kind of keep your skills around one attribute it's easier on you if you say all right i'm going to stick in the perception tree or i'm going to stick to the strength tree with this character because if you want to raise spear master higher you have to raise your perception and then the level of your perception governs how much you can raise all of these um, subsequent skills so you can't just bounce around very easily because you need to raise the base stat around it so for example if i want to put a point in spear master what is this going to do for me i click on the skill and it gives you um a description of it and then it says learn to inflict more damage and slow your enemies with power attacks and if i hover over sharp sticks right here on this panel it says sticks and stones can't break my bones but if combined make a nice spear spears do 10 percent more damage and power attacks have a 20 percent chance to slow enemies power attacks are done with right click when you have a weapon equipped stamina costs are reduced by eight percent and 15 percent for power attacks all right so i can click on this but here's something this is new with alpha 21 it says right here find more spears and parts and loot so if you start going into spears for example you're going to find more magazines that will help you train your skills you're going to find more parts that are spear oriented because the game is going to kind of like shape the loot in a way around your skills so i'm going to click on this and we've bought sharp sticks but notice i can't get impaler because i don't have my perception high enough so i'm going to raise my perception perception is the measure of your sensory awareness increasing perception raises the headshot bonus and dismemberment chance with spears rifles explosive weapons and tools so we can use demolitions like you know grenades explosives things like that rifles and spears i love all this stuff and if i buy on the wear, we do more headshot damage and we have a better chance to dismember so i'm going to buy it and then i can click on do i want lucky looter which gives me a five percent chance um to the loot that we find it's like just better than normal treasure hunter is good um so when we're digging for treasure and salvage operations lets me salvage things for more um if you use salvage tools they do 10 percent more damage harvest faster and you gain more resources when you're salvaging uh, out in the wild so like for example let's say there's a car or something like that if you have a wrench you can like salvage the car or whatever item is out in the world and get resources from it and if you raise this you just get more it goes faster i'm going to go ahead and raise um my perception again and then now i can actually raise spear master again so i spent all of my skill points on just perception and spear master and if you click on this pen this is your journal this is where you can find all sorts of important things that i didn't cover but here's your skill points here's being a white river citizen this is the note that we found um when we completed the quest this is about campfires and you can go through anything with a yellow pen you haven't read yet if it has a white pen you have read it now i'm going to go back to the crafting menu because i want to make a spear so let's go to the weapons screen and say i want to make a spear where is it well 
you can actually type here in the search menu and say spear. I want to make a stone spear. And click on it, and it says I need stones. So to make this spear, I just need to get stones. So I'm going to pick up a stone here. And oh my god, there's a zombie coming at me. So I don't really want to fight that zombie right now. I want to get my spear because I'm better with it. But if I had to fight that zombie, we certainly could with our club or our axe. There's another zombie. So she's going that way. She doesn't really see us. Now she does. And I'm just going to walk away from her. Something you need to remember is most of the time, unless they're running, you are faster than the zombies. So I can just kind of like casually walk away from this zombie. And look, we're just leaving her in the dust. You see how she's twitching? She's got a limp. She's not doing that great. So just go away from her. And if you run away from her, you will leave her in the dust insanely. You can push control to crouch if you want to be real sneaky. And then when you do push control to crouch, you'll see in the bottom left above the sneaker icon for your stamina, there is a awareness bar. And this shows you like how successful you're being at basically sneaking around. Now, I'm not a sneaky character, so I'm not great at that, but it can help you, especially early. I'm going to pick up this stone and in the bottom right, when you pick up something, it tells you how many you've gained. But in parentheses, it shows you how many you have. So now I have six stones. I'm going to push tab. And I'm going to make this spear for myself. Just push W. And now we've got a spear. And I'm going to select this spear. And I'm going to put it in the fourth slot. Now I've got my spear. Let's go back to that zombie that we saw earlier. So I can left click to do a regular spear attack. And I can right click to do a power attack. Notice they take up different levels of stamina based on which type of attack. Something with a spear that is hard to gauge, but you'll get used to it, is it actually reaches way further than you'd think. So you notice I've hit her, and she's gone. And when you kill her in the bottom right, you'll see the experience that we gained Always look for that experience gain when you are fighting a zombie to know if they're really dead. So if you get that, you know, okay, she's definitely dead. And what I mean to tell you is uh, we got some goldenrod and some lead. I'll take it, whatever. Zombies don't drop loot in this game. You can't loot her body. If she had loot, it would appear as a backpack next to her. What you need to figure out, though, is how far this reaches because one of the great strengths of the spear is the fact that it gets far away like the zombies can't hit you while you're just hitting them like if i right click and i just hit her in the head you'll see i got 400 experience points in the bottom right she's dead one shot with our spear this guy is big he's a little hardier i hit him in the head i hit him in the head he's still alive and he's dead now 400 experience i'm just power attacking with right click look at my purple bar in the bottom center of the heads-up display above the toolbar. That's showing us how much experience, and we're getting a lot of experience by just killing these fools. Now, I could explore that cabin if I wanted to, and you're certainly welcome to do that. I'm going to get these bird nests. The reason I'm searching these bird nests is just because eggs, if you can find them, are a nice thing to eat. You don't have to worry about sleeping in this game, but you sure have to worry about eating and drinking. All right, and I'm heading towards the quest marker. You can see it on the screen. There's a big exclamation point, and there's a meters indicator that's telling me how far away it is, and so I'm moving in the right direction, getting closer to this. I'll take all of that stuff fine. You'll notice, like, little bags of trash, whatever it is. Just go over here, push E to search through it, and we've got some baton parts and some lead. You might not need all of this. You can just drop it if you don't. But I always like to just try to pick things up. There's a zombie over here. I'm going to get some stones. Remember, unlike many games, you know, that are crafting games, Valheim, Medieval Dynasty, whatever you're playing, you don't have to worry about stones. Okay, we got her. She's gone. Because they don't weigh anything more extraordinary than other items it just takes up a slot so pick up as many stones as you want like some games you pick up like three stones and your character's like i can't carry anymore not in this game chicken got it 
Now, we can't actually harvest resources from the chicken because we need a knife. So I need to make a knife. And I, to make it, I could make a bone knife, but I don't have any bones. So, unfortunately, I can't skin that chicken until I get some bones. But don't worry, we'll find bones all over the place. Looks like somebody set up a trading facility at this church right here. All right, and I'm just going to run over here. I like to kill the zombies early in the game because it's just good experience, and it's good practice using your weapon. You can see the durability of our spear is dropping, but so what? Now, notice how when I'm running, I always stop before I get to the zombie because I want to fight with full stamina. You'll... Maybe not right now, but if you have to fight a bunch of zombies, you're going to notice very quickly that your stamina goes out and you're not going to be able to attack if you don't have any stamina. So that's a huge shame. So you need to be very mindful of your stamina. I'm going to push tab really fast and I'm going to go over to uh, my spear right here. And I have a level... Oh, no, that's my club. I have a level one spear. Okay, fine. Now, what if I want to repair it? You see how it's damaged a little bit? I repaired it right there using some resources from my inventory. So I either used a stone or some wood, whatever it takes to repair it. If you have it, you can fix up its durability. Now, I can also, though, go to spear. And right now, I'm making a level one spear. But as I get better with spears, um, I will be able to make a level two spear. But that's going to require... I'll show you that in a moment. It's going to require us to find some reading materials, I believe. All right. Take that. Here's a car. You can come over to this car and search it. See if there's anything good inside. It takes a long time to search the car. Uh, but we actually do find some good stuff. There's some electric parts, some iron, and some brass. Now, the brass is just nice because I can sell it. And here is Jen's clinic. All right. So in our world, we've got Jen. Your world, you might have a different trader. Jen is one of the nicer traders. Some of the other traders are mean, cantankerous sorts. Okay. Got him. And let's, before we do anything else, let's just go in. So in the daytime, you can enter the trader's place and it's protected. But it just closes at night, and you can't come in. They kick you out if you're in here. So you can only get here to get your quests, to buy stuff, and to be safe during the daytime. Now, this is important. You notice how there's all this stuff in here with Jen um, at her little facility? You can search and take anything you want in here. It does not upset her, so it's not like you're stealing. So just go ahead and search all this stuff and take whatever you like. Whatever parts you think you might need, loot it. But first, I'm going to go into the church here and pay my respects to Jen. And boy, she is up at the altar. Boy, there's a vending machine. She must have moved these inside. She's done a little redecorating for her base. And let's go talk to her. Don't look so good. I'm not doing you so might good. I want to get some antibiotics for that. I need a lot of things for this. All right, so Jen is going to help us out, and we talk to her. And what you want to do with Jen is you want to say, do you have any jobs? And this is the beginning portion of the game, and this is what you're going to be doing for a long time in Seven Days to Die. At least what I personally recommend is grinding these quests. Doing these quests gives you great reward. Once you do a certain number, you get even better rewards. You build up your faction. You can take on more difficult quests. And it's a great way to progress in the game. So of these quests, these are all clear zombies except for this fetch quest here. And it tells you how far away they are. I always like to do the close ones. So this quest right here is only 258 meters away. I'm going to oh, select it. Best way to get dukes and rewards. So dukes are money in this game. You can use it to buy things. Um from Jen or other traders, and we want as many as we can get. Go prove that you have what it takes to be part of the White River Runners. So this is all part of us proving that we can join the cool settlement. We need to get the zombies at Wilbur's Place. So Wilbur's Place is what's called a POI, or Point of Interest, in Seven Days to Die. And you'll notice how the text is written in that kind of like 
brownish color I accept. Okay. Be careful and try not to get yourself killed. I will. Thank you so much. Points of interest are places on the map that have a quest, and once you activate them, they will respawn the loot and the items and the enemies inside. Um, and I'll show you that when we get there. But it's interesting to know because even that cabin that we saw uh, is probably a point of interest. It could be this point of interest for all I know. But you'll get used to identifying them and we'll talk about them as we go. And let's see, anything good over here? I mean... I don't know. Is that Jen's purse? I don't know. The dollars you can sell to Jen for some good money. And you could search through here. You could see, is there anything good in this place? Well, look at that. We found bones. So right away, we can craft that bone knife if we want. There is some, you know, charcoal in here. And disgusting. But there's some items. Now, it's there's hilarious artwork of a dog with a crown. If you hit this, uh, I'm going to select my axe and break these. Sometimes there are wall safes behind these items. So it's worth searching. Always search the toilets. Uh, because, hey, right off the bat, you can find guns in toilets. It's a lucky find. Uh, we got ourselves a level one pistol. Now, I'm terrible with guns. I'm not probably going to use that, but that's funny. We could sell it if we wanted to. But I think the most important thing for us to do right now is to just do a quest. So I'm going to run us. over here and let's see i'm gonna push m our map clears out based on where we've been and also okay we could see right here this is where we they want us to go to clear so let's just get this on the compass and it's that way but you always have to leave these trading facilities out the front door she was trying to get in she really wants to go buy some stuff i mean i can understand that but okay get out of here all right she's gone and we're going to go over here. Okay. I'm running, so it's hurting my stamina a lot. And you'll notice that it's getting to be nighttime. You don't want to be out when it's nighttime. So one thing we could do, you know, is try to pass time uh, at that cabin that we found. But I think, I think we might be going back to that cabin, which is cool. We could talk about it when we get there. Alright, this guy's over here. I'd really like to level up. If possible. I like your raincoat. Alright, that guy was being tricky. I don't appreciate that at all. But you'll notice how they lunge for you, and that's why having a spear is so useful. But I also went clubs my first time I played, and I loved clubs too, and shotguns. So there's lots of fun things to do in this game. Whenever you hear a rustle, I always just look around to make sure there's not some zombie that I missed. Oh, there's a backpack. What's in here? Oh, look at that. We got some gloves and a hat. Take everything. Okay. So I'm going to go to my inventory and push tab. Uh, I'm just going to click on these gloves and I'll wear them. And then this is a hat mod that you can actually put onto a headpiece. But we don't have anything. So mods have these gears on them and you attach them to equipment. Um, I was sneaking for some reason. I'm going to push control to stop doing that. All right, so here's what I like to do. We're at Wilbur's Place. Now, you see how there's one red skull right there? That's kind of like the level of difficulty. I believe that zero red skulls is like the easiest, and then it gets harder from there. This is right up our level. We can do this. No problem. But here's what I always like to do when I get to a point of interest or a quest location. Clear it out first. Go inside kill everything inside, loot everything, and then go to this quest icon that's right here, and it'll say push E to start the quest. 
Because if you start the quest now, then you miss like half of the loot. This lets you get a good portion of the loot, and then you get like another portion of the loot. Alright, she is injured. And we can search these bookcases, and look at what we found. So in bookcases, you can find magazines or books. If they have these white book icon in the upper left, that means you haven't read it, and these just give you experience. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm just going to um, push A to use them. And we unlocked shotguns by reading that magazine about shotguns. Now there's a nurse in here. Uh, she's not aware of us. Oh my god. So you notice how we knocked off her head right there? Okay. Right, we got that guy. That's dismemberment. That's why perception is hilarious. Once you get better with perception, you're going to start knocking off arms, legs, heads of enemies all the time. Okay. This is a very difficult enemy for us. Didn't want to see that right there, but we did see it. All right, we got bit by a dog, which you see we're down to 88 health out of 100. That's a shame. We can bandage up, but we don't need to just yet. I wish that didn't happen, but at least we didn't die. All right. Was that their dog? Always search the uh, paper. I hate paper. I don't even really ever pick up paper, to be honest. You're going to learn as you go what is good to pick up and what matters and what doesn't, you know. You'll And it depends on your build a bit. Here's some corn that we can just eat. I'm just going to push A and eat it. And it'll fill up our green bar a little bit. Search through this trash here. Ooh, they have a bunch of stuff. Open this door. Anybody in here? Search the sink cabinet. All right, we got a sandwich. Now, if you eat this, it has a 12% chance to give you dysentery, and it actually hurts your health. So try not to eat rotten stuff. I'm not even going to pick it up. Unless you're starving. Like, like you have no options. We're going to take toilet water. It's murky water. Don't drink this water. Hurts you. Unless you are got no other water. But we can clean this by uh, boiling it. So we're going to take it. Add a fire, and we'll talk about that later. Right now, I'm just clearing this place out, making sure that we've looted it all. There's some cupboards. Anything in here? Yeah, there's some more corn. That's good. Corn meal. All right, whatever. And, uh-oh, not whatever. Notice how in the lower left... There's a picture of a person carrying something with the number four. That means I'm encumbered by four. So if I push tab, you see I have four items in the extra slots beyond what I can actually carry. So I'm going to start getting rid of stuff. I'm just going to drop this. I'm going to drop these seeds. I don't need that. Uh, I'm going to just eat this corn. It doesn't give you a lot, but it just won't take up a slot anymore. And then you can now push this to sort the container. Um, what else do I want to just get rid of? I don't really need right now. Um, lock picks I do want, but cobblestone rocks. Don't need this. Drop it. Uh, lead. Don't need it. Clay. Don't need it. I'm just dropping things. Rearrange. There we go. Okay. Things that you can find in abundance, like, there's just no reason. All right, let's just check out the top floor. The other thing that's nice about scouting this out early is that it lets you um, see what the layout is going to be like for the place so that you know even before you do the quest. Ooh, there's some ammo. Oh, God. Okay. This person fell in from somewhere. Now, luckily, they didn't hit us for very much damage. Where did you come from? They either came from inside a cabinet that I didn't see, from downstairs, or there is a crawl space or something somewhere. Anyway, scary. All right, search the wood crate. 
And look at this. We got the Great Heist. Use it. And who? We got some shoes. Uh, I'm just going to wear these. You can wear them directly from the chest just by pushing D. We got a nice big first aid kit, which we'll take. And we got some ammo. Oh, I, actually, I accidentally used that instead of taking it. I pushed A. Um, so that's a mistake, but it heals us, so that's fine. Now, sometimes if you want, you can, like, knock off the door, and you'll find that there's, like, treasure hidden behind there. It's not good, but they f they hide a lot of secrets in this game. Here we go. Spear Hunter. Use it. Sharp sticks. Use it. Perfect. So by using those, eventually we'll be able to make better spears. All right. Now, if you want the crack -a book shipping crate, you have to hit it with the axe until it breaks. Then you can search it, and you can get a magazine A, and we have a, a schematic. Read that as well. So now we know how to make that shotgun mod, and it's nighttime. You see there's a little loot hidden over there if you want to try to jump over there. By the way, spacebar jumps. Haven't really mentioned that yet, but you do need that at times to do some parkour. All right, so... This is the kind of key loot from this place, are these two boxes. And now if we go to the quest, these will respawn and we will get more loot. Anything else I want to get here? Not at the time being. It is dark because it's nighttime. Make sure no one's out back. There isn't. Okay. So we're going to start this quest again. And what I'm going to do before I do that, though, I'm going to push tab. And I'm going to go to my stone spear that I have right here. And I'm going to um, select this, and I'm going to repair it. I need my weapons to all be at full strength for this fight. Okay. All right. So I'm ready to go. It's nighttime. This is not ideal. If you wanted to, what you could do if you didn't want to fight at night because there's nastier things... Remember, you can't sleep in this game, but what you can do is hold yourself up. So you could come over here and then, like, just wait here for the whole night and just kind of, you know, defend yourself. You could build blocks to block this staircase up to make it easier for yourself. You could, like, wall this all off with wood and stuff like that if you wanted to. I'm not worried about it right now. It's fine. And what I'm going to do is just click on this and start it up. So now you'll notice that the door is closed, and things have changed. The locations of the zombies have changed. You can hear them. Oh, my God. She came out. She's angry. She's dead. I knocked her arm off. Okay. Yep. This guy came over. I don't even know where he came from, but... Knocked his head off. How about that? That was intense. Alright. There's a zombie over there, but they don't see us. There's also some zombies over here. They're a little far away. We should be fine. Let's explore this place. We've got a quest to complete. And... That one's dead. Okay, somebody's bursting through the door over here. You can hear them. Or maybe they're upstairs. Somebody is upset. Right, let me check in here. Are you in here? Hmm. Not entirely sure where you are. There's a zombie that's sitting right there. That will wake up and come after us. Oh, they're right here. Okay, let's just open the door for them. Okay, they're both coming. Alright, that guy took a big shot. All right, I'm going to walk out and just get my stamina back a little bit. This is a big zombie. She's tough. She's got a lot of hit points unless we knock off her head. You'll notice that she gave us um, more experience, 750, than normal. Because she's just really hardy. She's got a lot of health. All right, I'm going to close this door. It will provide some coverage. And we'll just search this bookcase. And, okay, look. 
improve fittings mod schematic. Great. Search this. And, ah, uh, whatever. Alright, we're rolling. Anybody in here? Search that toilet. Paper, leave it there. All right, we got a cooking pot. This is actually really good. You have to have this. I don't need sand. I'm going to drop it. Uh, there are things... Uh, disgusting. Um, cooking pot and a grill. We put them on a campfire to let us cook new recipes and boil water. So we really needed that cooking pot. Let's go upstairs and see who's up here waiting for us. You have to search everywhere in this game. Alright, so this zombie is like crawling. Got it. We leveled up. This guy's now awake. Alright. Zombies will explode out of hidden areas. They will fall from the ceiling. They will jump in from outside. You always want to be ready for them. Um, there's still a zombie left somewhere. I'm going to just check this out again. Anything this time? Nah, just some garbage. S search the wood crate. Oh, all right. We got some leg armor. We got a bunk buster mod. Take all of this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear this uh, leg armor that we got. And this is more damage against stone for a pickaxe. Okay, that's cool. I'm actually going to take that and I'm going to take it um, instead of uh, this electrical part for now. I'm not really using that. You can still hear that there's an angry zombie out here. I'm going to look in this. And I'm going to use this magazine. And there we go. We just got it. We can now craft a better spear. Level 2 spear. I'm going to push tab. And I'm going to go into my level panel. And... I can't raise Spear Master, but I can certainly raise Perception and boost our headshot damage. There we go. And I'm going to push Tab, and I'm going to make a Spear. Now you see how it's level 2, and it has an orange bar instead of the brown bar. This indicates that it's level 2. I'm going to craft it. And I'm going to now take this new spear that we just made, and I'm going to equip it instead of our old one. I'm going to drop our old one. Sort the items. And now we've got an even better spear. It does more damage. Everything is better. Fantastic. I'm going to break that. And look at that. You see how I said there might be a safe behind these things? There's one right there. Now I'm going to try to open this. I do have lock picks, so that's what I'm using. I'm going to just keep going, though, and use all the lock picks I have. The timer does not reset. It resumes. I'm bad at picking locks, but so what? I can get this. If you don't have lock picks, you can just hit this with an axe until it opens. But it takes a long time. Apparently, once you get it to this point, it's not going to open anymore, and I'm out of lock picks. You see how it has 2,500 hit points? So that's really tough. You could do that if you wanted. I'm not that interested in it. Um, but sometimes there's good items there. So if you wanted to stand here and really, really go, you know, to town hitting this, you could do that. I'm going to skip it. All right. There's still a zombie over here. You could see they're trying to get in. Got her. No, we didn't. Are you dead yet? Finally. Okay, that was a tough one. And I'm going to push map. And okay. Did we clear the area? Yeah. Okay, we're good. So now it says talk to trader and we go back to Jen and we complete the quest. And let's run back to Jen. It's nighttime, so I'm going fast. But notice how what we got there was double loot. Fantastic. All right, I'll take these metal parts, whatever. And let's go. I'm going to run now. Oh, there's a lady right here. We can just talk to her about our spear. We, we leveled up our spear. Do you think it's stronger? It is. Trust me. 
All right, she's gone. Did she drop anything? No. They're just like experience bags. There's so many zombies. You don't have to kill them. They really, you can just walk right by them if you want. And you can see the church here in the distance where Jen has set up camp. We'll go turn this into her, and she's going to give us a bunch of money. And we can take a new quest, get more experience, and get stronger, and start settling in. It's day two right now, so we're doing fine. Oh, looks like you can maybe get in from this side of the camp. Sometimes they only let you in through one side. Let's see if that door will open. Now, it's nighttime, so Jen's not open at the moment, so we have to wait until... Um, she opens. This is a tough zombie. By the way. I don't have enough stamina to even hit it. Oh, God. <laughs> that was almost terrible. I walked up on her wall. Okay. Got it. 750. Now we're thirsty and hungry. So I'm going to eat this spam. And I'm going to drink this water. Health or food and water do not restore instantly. You have to kind of wait for them to charge back up. You can see like there's on the lower left, there's tickers. I'm restoring hit points from eating. I'm getting my satiety back up and my hydration. Right, these zombies are upset. This guy's doing the jiggle. They might be coming from... Yeah, this is a night zombie, so you see how he's fast? Now, we made him a little slower than he normally would be. Get out of here. It is extra experience. So there's that. But again, after we cleared out that quest, you could easily just stay in the cabin if you want. 4 a.m. is when nighttime ends and when the horrors of the evening wrap up. There's a snake. You got to watch out for this. They added a bunch of snakes into the game. They will wreck you. They will poison you. They will make your life a nightmare. So look, I mean, they're huge. It's like this giant rattlesnake. You got to watch out for those, though. And they can obviously hide in the grass and stuff. Boy. She wasn't very nice. Alright. So the night zombies are just way harder. So might wait a little bit. And not mess with them. But I have fun. Fighting them. There's a crawler. And a green shirt lady. She wants to get into Jen's clinic. They're not letting her in. She's upset. Got her down. That is the head blown off. And we're already halfway to level three. Mm, it's a bunch of lead that I don't need. I'm going to, yep, drop it. Okay. Now, one thing we can do while we're chilling, um, I'm going to just push tab, and I'm going to go back to the basics, and I could just make um, a campfire... Uh, oh, I have no stones. Oh, because I made the better spear. Right. I was going to throw a campfire together, but I need some stones to do that. So we can run over here and just try to find some. Search this bird nest for sure. Okay. Uh-huh. We got one stone. Here's some more. By the way, it's still nighttime, so watch out for the night zombies because they're going to be super fast. Like, look at this. This might be a feral zombie, which is beyond nightmarish. We got it, though. Ooh. That is disturbing. All right. And let's see. I just need a few more stones. Here's one. Oh, here we go. Okay, great. We have six now. 
I'm going to run over to the front of Jen's place. Just because we cleared out most of the zombies here. And I am going to make that campfire. Push W to craft this. Put it on our hotbar. By the way, also for encumbrance, you can just drop things onto your hotbar. And they won't take up encumbrance. They won't count against you. I'm going to drop this fire, like right there. And I'm going to push E to use it. Now, when you're in the campfire, you can cook stuff. All your recipes show up. But also in the upper... Um, left it says tools you can drag your pot over here so now we have a pot and i'm going to go to drink and i want to make water and i have murky water so i can cook this but i can't cook it yet because my fire has no fuel so it wants wood so we can put wood on there now i don't want to put all of my wood though um because Mm-hmm. Here we go. So you uh right click and hold to take half the stack. I'm just gonna put half the stack on there. It won't burn at all. It'll I'll just take the wood when I'm done, but I don't want to put all my wood there. Now, once I've got the pot here, the recipe selected, you just click turn on and then you cook the recipe. And it's gonna cook one at a time. It actually takes a while to purify the water. And you can see the sun's coming up, but you see we've hung our pot up and we're using it to make this water and you can queue up another one and it goes behind it in the queue and it's just going and you don't have to do anything you could stand back and just let this happen i'm going to repair my spear while i'm sitting here get that baby strong again and now it's daytime again now she'll open later you'll hear a big noise when she's about to open you can push e the output of the water that's done will come over here for us. You can see it's going to be a few seconds till we get it. Okay. And now we have some more clean water. So we can just drag this right here and we've got some delicious clean water to drink. Phenomenal. All right. I actually need a drink. So I will use one. Now there's some raw meat right here. So we could go over here and say, hey, can we cook meat? Well, mm, not really, but we can boil eggs. So you can boil eggs by using water and eggs, uh, but it takes a lot of, you know, water for us to do this. So we'd have to get more nasty water. There's a little tent over here. I'm going to get my spear out. There's some... Somebody left some supplies. So let's loot this up. Uh, this zombie is alive. So just make sure you take it down. I had a backpack. All right. Some brass and some bullets. Anything good in here? Unfortunately, they didn't really have much. Oh my god, a snake. You see it? Oh, so scary. I'm going to go here. Take all that stuff. We are... Um, watch out for the drain. Okay. This should be done. Our next thing of water. It is. I'm going to just take this. Shift left click to pull it out of there. And I'm going to shift... Um, I'm going to turn off the fire for now. I'll leave this set up right here for future cooking. And let's see here. Anything else that's nearby that's good for us? Let's just kind of scout this out and see where some houses might be. Houses are the best thing for us to loot. Now, you could go down here if you want, but it's not going to be that much loot usually. It's just a lot of zombies. So, eh. All right, let's see what we got in the map. Anything good? There's this one house. There's our spawn point. You could, by the way, build a bedroll right in front of Jen's and just make this your spawn point if you want to be close to here, which isn't a bad idea. I'm going to search through these cars and fight these zombies until Jen opens up. All right. 
So this guy is a traveling salesman, and we just knock him down, and he's gone. Mound of garbage. Hmm. I mean, coffee seeds are fine. Another thing you could do, by the way, instead of pushing R, is you can just say, um, take items to fill up existing inventory. So you'll only take things that you have so that you don't take and encumber yourself. Little shopping cart here. And, dear God, let's check this van. Anything in the old minivan here? Oh, okay. Well, duct tape's actually pretty good. I'm going to put back this goldenrod seed over here. I'm not really doing any gardening right now. That's just not in my wheelhouse. Oh, here's a... This is a tough zombie. He's a biker. Okay, 750 experience for that guy. Thank you so much. There's a backpack. There's some garbage. All right, chemicals. That stinks. What you got? Got some water. Got to clean it, but better than nothing. Now, in Alpha tw uh, 21, they took out jars. You used to have to get jars all the time to carry water. Now you just automatically get jars whenever you get water, and you don't need them at all. So it's super convenient. All right, I'm going to circle back to Jen. She'll blow a, a siren or a horn when she opens up, so it's real obvious that it's time to do business. Oh, looks like I'm over-encumbered by just a bit. What don't I need that I'm carrying around? I really don't need this cornmeal. You know what? While we're here, let's just push tab, go back to the basics, and I can make myself... You know, a bedroll with some plant fiber. So we can just use whatever and just kind of collect plant fiber. And let's just make our spawn point right here. So if we die, we back here. Remember, we start with everything based on our settings. So I'm going to go here and I'm just going to make a bedroll. And I'll put it here. And I'd love to make a secure storage chest as well. Craft it. And put this here. So, Jen opens at 6 a.m. All traders do. And we're going to put this back, uh, the bedroll right here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's a good rotation. Right click to set it and push. Um, now it's basically our spawn point. You can see that it's um, got the bed there. And then I'm going to put this chest right by the, by this, oops, like that. There we go. Can I put this down? My claim area? I don't know if you can put the claim area this close to her, but I'm just going to put it here for now. Yeah, no, it's not going to let me put it that close. It has to be, uh, the, the area has to be further away from her. Anyway, now I'm going to go to my storage chest and I'm going to dump stuff in that I don't need. Like, okay, the, uh, arrows, the bow, I'm not using that at all. Uh, this clay, I really don't need it. Th these bullets, this mod right here, uh, this mod, I don't have that, this seed, just anything you think like, you know what, I'm not going to be using this right now put it in there and then let's go here and let's talk to Jen and complete our first quest hello traveler hello congratulations I can make my payment to the Duke now so she's gonna give us 3,000 experience and 800 Dukes which is the money and then we get to choose what do we want so we could take a you know, these mods, this water, these bullets. But I love these crafting skill magazine bundles. I'm going to complete it. And you could say, do you have any jobs? And she's got new jobs for us. The closest job is actually this 
clear zombies, so I'll take it. I think I've got a job or two. Ranger Station Beta, except. Oh, I would kiss you, but, um, you know, apocalypse hygiene and all. Sure. All right, and now um, we're almost up a level, and we can go ahead and uh, open this crate, and look at this. We got Forge Ahead. These give you experience and teach you how to make stuff. We made a Dew Collector. Shotgun Weekly. All right. Fantastic. So that's our first quest, and now we've got a new quest over in this area. We've learned so many things about the game we've been putting our skill points in spears we've got a little kind of a camp area for ourselves right here to make more food and water when we need it and we do need to start scaring up uh, some things to eat so we might have to go hunting or maybe at the ranger station they'll have some food for us everyone i think this is a good place to stop our first episode of this guide series on how to play Seven Days to Die, the complete beginner's guide with Alpha 21 in 2023. I hope you all are finding this useful and enjoying the game. If you have any questions, please post those in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to offer help to new players, remember in the comments when you're adding information, create it in such a way that it, a person who's never played this game before can understand it. Avoid spoilers. Um, and try to keep it in the vein of helping a brand new person or a newer player in the game um, so that they can understand it. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care.